So there's this idea floating around in the Sonic community for a while, and that's the idea of more solo spin-off games. Would it be a good idea to bring back that concept? Let's take a look. How's it going everyone? Blue Knight here and welcome back to another Sonic the Hedgehog video. More specifically about the idea of more solo spin-off games. Should they return? Yeah, I know, the first game that probably comes to mind when hearing that is most likely Shadow the Hedgehog. But the thing is, there are actually three other spin-off games in the Sonic franchise. In 1993, we got Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Man, that's a long title. Unlike the other spin-offs, Robotnik is not the main playable character here. Instead, that role goes to a character by the name of ha has Bean. Alright, kind of a clever name there. The point of the game is essentially it's played like Puyo Puyo, which was inspired by Tetris. Definitely a lot of inspirations here. The game itself was met with very positive reception from both fans and critics, even making appearances in Sonic Mania. Hey, we gotta give these guys credit for bringing this in here. And for the purpose of this video, I decided to try it out for the first time to see why people like it so much. And it's pretty straightforward, you just match these colored beans to each other like you would do with the blocks in Tetris. Nothing really to it. At least until I played the first level for like 5 minutes and then lost because I'm an idiot who had absolutely no idea how to actually win in the first place. Okay, I think I'm going to stick to Tetris for now. 1995 came around and two more solo spin-off games were released, Tails Adventure and Knuckles Chaotix, both of which were not as well received as past Sonic games, with Knuckles Chaotix being a commercial failure, same for the system that it was released on, the 32X. Despite this, the game's final boss did get incorporated into Sonic Mania Plus. I personally never played either one of these games, so I can't give my thoughts on them, but just like with Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, these two games still have their fans. So after those two games received mixed results, it was the last time Sega made a solo spin-off game. Until 10 years later, in 2005, with Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, making the series darker and edgier is exactly what the series needed. Where's that fourth Chaos Emerald? I will agree that this game went in a vastly different direction that this series should not have gone in. Yes, it can be argued that this is Shadow's game, not Sonic's, and I understand that they wanted to wrap up some of the plot mysteries behind Shadow's backstory since Adventure 2, but certain elements were just not necessary whatsoever. Heck, I'm still convinced that Sega was inspired by Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Daxter for Shadow's development. Mostly Jack and Daxter because the first game was bright and colorful like the typical Sonic game is. Then the sequel came out two years later and it was a massive tonal shift, adding some of the same types of elements seen in Shadow, resulting in a T rating which Shadow would have also got if not for the ESRB creating the E10 Plus rating that same year. Because of Shadow's massive tonal shift, pretty much everything about the game was criticized, with scores ranging from not great to really good. But despite the amount of criticism that the game itself got, it was a commercial success, selling over 2 million copies across the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube as of March 2007, which was almost a year and a half after its launch. Now for those wondering, I have not played this game. I have it, but I can't play it. Why? Because this is what happens when you buy a game for 5 bucks at Goodwill without checking the disc. I don't think I was meant to play this game. So if you want to know a Sonic fan's opinion on Shadow's game, then I highly recommend checking out Ant Dude's video on the subject. Link to his fantastic video will be in the description below. Still, it's been nearly 15 years since Sega released Shadow, which was the last Sonic solo spin-off game. And, well, is it time for Sega to try again? Here's the thing, it's not a clear-cut yes or no answer, so I'll try to explain it the best I can. 
starting with why I think Sega should. Doing another solo spin-off game would allow focus on only one character, one gameplay style, and build onto the character's backstory. Shadow did this, but imagine the possibilities this could open up for the other characters, albeit with a proper tone. For example, if we got a spin-off for Blaze, we could finally experience her world in full 3D and make full use of and expand on her fire abilities for puzzles, combat, speed, and more without having to juggle multiple playable characters. Problem would be in the terms of story, since we already know a good bit about her backstory. But to make up for that, they can build upon the pre-established lore of her own world. Another example could be Silver. Silver has his own abilities, including Flight, which was never properly utilized in gameplay. Again, this type of game could focus and expand on his abilities. Story is once again another factor. We all know Silver's stick by now. Future is a disaster, he comes to the past to prevent that from happening just about every time. I feel more can be done with him, like the whole game can just exclusively take place in the future, showing Silver's origins post-2006, or dealing with his own equivalent to Dr. Eggman, who's only been a main villain in the handheld games. Now as to why Sega should not do more of these, is because doing so is a big gamble. It could be a complete hit or a miss when you deduct Sonic's name from the title. The reason why Shadow was successful in sales, I assume, was because of his popularity in the franchise. At the same time, reviews were very mixed. Why Knuckles failed, I would guess had to do with the system it was released on, as well as gameplay mechanics. Even Ratchet and & Clank and Jack and & Daxter both attempted the very same solo spin-off strategy within five years of Shadow's release. With Secret Agent Clank, which received mixed reviews and poor sales, as in roughly 750,000 copies across the PSP and PS2, making it one of the worst selling Ratchet and Clank games ever made. Then there's Daxter, which was a massive success, selling over 4 million copies and being considered one of the best PSP games ever made by numerous gaming outlets. I've personally played Daxter, and I can stand by these statements, but both of these games were not even made by the original developers and the hit or miss rule still applied. In short, if Sega decided to do another solo spin-off game, it's not guaranteed to be a success, as there's numerous factors involved, like character popularity for instance. Like say, for some reason they decide to make a game about Vector the Crocodile of all Sonic characters. Find the computer room! Would people buy it? Would there be enough interest? Or would it be seen as a mere croc knockoff? Okay, I probably wouldn't be that, but you get my point. Who knows, but in the end, it's entirely Sega's decision to give it another go. But that's going to basically be it for today's video. So, what do you guys think about this? Do you think Sega should give the Sonic Solo spin-offs one more chance? If so, what character do you think should be the star of it? Or should Sega just leave the idea in the past? Be sure to let me know in the comments section below, and also be sure to stay tuned to the channel for even more Sonic the Hedgehog content coming to you at the speed of sound. Once again, thank you all so much for watching and supporting the channel. I've been Blue Knight, and I'll see you guys back here next time. Goodbye!